Hello friends, welcome to this video about the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of an Iron Age woman from Pakistan. Uh, this is where she is from, let me show you the location of um, where she lived. It is in the very north of Pakistan in the Swat, Swat Valley. Uh, her mitochondrial lineage was HV18 and she does not have Y DNA because she is a female. So first let me show you her ethnic calculator results with my trade predictor then i'm going to show you her results with gd match so with my trade predictor she is closest to south asians followed by karakaba turkics followed by inhabitants of shahr e sakhte in the second region in the second period of the bronze age uh, this is these inhabitants resemble modern north indians and pakistanis followed by that is our punjabi jats balshoyle niostrov uyghurs sri lankans and various other eurasians uh, her closest model with my trade predictor is actually a mixture of Mongol plus Iranian or Mongol plus Georgian, which is quite interesting. Uh, there is also Polynesian plus Iranian, which comes uh, third place, or Georgian plus Yakutia Neolithic. Uh, definitely quite interesting. So, so, so with my trade predictor, there seems to be a Polynesian or an East Eurasian um, signal in this individual. We're going to see how, how true is that with GED match. So... Let's look at Eurogene's K13. With Eurogene's K13, this is what she scores. Uh, she's scoring actually more West Asian than South Asian, which is definitely very interesting. Definitely quite Baloch or uh, West of Pakistan rather than North of Pakistan shifted. She is not scoring any... She's not really scoring that much Baltic or European components. So she's also not very heavily not very heavily stepped, which is very interesting. Uh, although she, this is an Iron Age sample. This is an Iron Age woman. She doesn't really have that much Indo-European admixture. And with the Oracle, she's getting more as a mixture of Sindhi plus Brahui or Sindhi plus Balochi. Uh, these groups of people in South, a in South Asia are among the groups with, with the least um, Indo-European admixture. So let's look at her results with Nashakot, what phenotypes she had, what uh, kind of what, what, what she looked like, right? So the first closest phenotype to her is this, which is, I think is a Pamiri phenotype. Uh, second phenotype is this, which is a South Asian phenotype. And the third phenotype is this, which is also a South Asian, but more of a South Indian phenotype rather than um, particularly Pakistani, right? So the closest model, the closest mixture for her uh, is a mixture of this Pamiri plus this South Asian or uh, South Indian phenotype. So I kind of see it, the way I see it is a mixture of Iranian Neolithic farmer plus AASI. Uh, it's a really good way to envision that. So her phenotype is basically Iranian Neolithic farmer plus ancestral South Indian. And this on the bottom would be ancestral South Indian. This on top would be Iranian Neolithic farmer. Actually, this applies to all of these uh, mixtures, all of these two-way mixtures um, ranked from the closest to the furthest. They all seem to be what you would imagine um, on top would be Iranian Neolithic farmers and on the bottom would be the AASI. Actually, for, this is true for all of these mixtures, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but she is a mixture of something that is West Eurasian plus something that is East Eurasian, essentially, in terms of her phenotype. Uh, when it comes to her eye color, she definitely has very dark eye color, darkest brown or brown eye color. A likelihood of hazel eyes or anything lighter than hazel is close to zero. Uh, her hair color is definitely, once again, very dark, black hair. Likelihood of any hair color lighter than black is essentially close to zero. Uh, her skin color is light brown. Uh, likelihood of dark brown is quite high as well, 3.7%. But um, lighter skin tones, skin tones that are lighter than light brown, once again, very close to zero. So she's, she's quite brown in terms of her phenotype. She has straight hair, or actually straight or wavy or curly hair. All of these are po quite possible in this result. Uh, the, the only hair texture that is improbable is kinky hair. She probably does not have kinky hair. She does not have BEH2 or BEH3 or even BEH1, so she's definitely very dark. All right, uh, now let's go ahead and see what she scores for the polygenic risk scores, what kind of diseases she is predisposed to. So it looks like she's got a average predisposition to atrial fibrillation. Uh, she, nothing relevant was found for deep vein thrombosis, which is quite unfortunate. She's got an above average score for bipolar type 1. She's got an above average score for schizophrenia. She's got a high score for type 2 diabetes, which is definitely unfortunate. And she's got a below average score for Alzheimer's and a below average score for multiple sclerosis. Definitely very interesting to see. Uh, four risk variants for breast cancer out of eight, which is unfortunate. But then again, eight is um, it's a signature of a low quality file. Typically with higher, with higher quality files, you will see out of 24, out of 30. In this case, it's out of eight. 
for testicular cancer, 10 risk variance out of 18, which is definitely very unfortunate, uh, higher than average for sure. For celiac disease section, she's got one risk variant out of six, which is uh, kind of typical. For GSS, nothing relevant was found. For Crohn's, six out of 18, which is once again quite unfortunate. But um, yeah, six out of 18 is definitely kind of alarming for Crohn's section. And for Reifenstein's, nothing was found. And for Parkinson's, one out of 12, which is quite typical. All right. Uh, there is nothing too concerning in this result aside from the score for type 2 diabetes. So now let's move on to her results with the biomarkers. And we're going to finish the video uh actually no i have something to show you i have something to show you at the end so for the biomarkers it looks like she's got a slightly above average um predisposition to higher levels of vitamin d so slightly above average levels of vitamin d which is really good for, for sure slightly above average levels of ldl cholesterol which is definitely quite unfortunate and slightly below average levels of hdl cholesterol which is which is also quite unfortunate uh for glucose it looks like it looks like she's got a um spot on average level of glucose which is very typical really good to see for hemo hemoglobin once again spot on average once again really typical for blood pressure looks like spot on average once again uh for expected level of iron in the blood it looks like she's got quite spot on average results here as well so there is nothing too um interesting to talk about but there is something interesting in this file and it's that she has a very very rare blood type her blood type is actually a b uh you will not find that many samples or that many living people today with blood type AB. Actually, let me look up how common that is. How common is blood type AB? Um, it is really, 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 really uncommon. 0.6% of the population, yeah. Oh, wait, AB minus is 0 0.6. AB plus is 3.4. So altogether, it's 4% of the population that have blood type AB. Um, yeah, it's definitely very, very rare. So yeah, she's got this super rare blood type. Definitely quite interesting. Is there anything else that's, that I want to talk about? No, there's, I don't really want to talk about anything else. Uh, well, thanks for watching until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. And also, I want to remind you that you can download this file in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching.